This is my neighborhood. I mean, there's nothing really here for us. Even the youth, I mean, there's no recreation centers or no escape. So the only thing that you really have is violence. You have the drug dealing, which I'm fine with because drug dealers have kids. They have lives, they have responsibilities, just like the rest of us. We've been living in poverty since I can remember. They don't tell you that. They don't tell you that there's no jobs here. I look at our police, Baltimore City Police, as bullies. And this is why I feel that the rioting and the burning of buildings is, is needed only because I look at it as a kid when you had a bully and they bully you every day when you go to school. And if you walk up to your bully peacefully, which is what everybody say, we should be peaceful. If you walk up to your bully peacefully and say, hey man, can you please stop bullying me every day I come to school? I promise you, he will keep bullying you every day you come to school. Now, when you pick up something and you knock him upside his head, it gives him a different perspective. He says, oh, okay, now he's fighting back. Maybe I should stop bullying him before I end up hurt. And so that's what I, that's what I, that's what this situation is. This is us knocking the bully upside his head. As a city, we all came together and took part in peaceful protests and peaceful marches and things of that nature. What you didn't see was, you know, other, what could I call them, people antagonizing us to basically get a negative reaction. Do you mean the police? The police as well as some people, outsiders, outsiders who... People who agree with the police right. behavior um, and agree with the, um, the harm in African-American people. Um, those those people. I'm not going to characterize people in that way, but we have to be honest here and, and say the truth. It's a lot of people who agree with African American brutality. You have those people and they are the majority. In Baltimore? In Baltimore and, and all over. I'm not going to incriminate myself, but, <laughs> but um, I participated. I was out. I was in the middle of North and Fulton Avenue Monday. Um, and you see a bunch of kids out there breaking into stores. But if we were breaking into some Asian's bar and stealing their liquor or whatever it is that they have insured that will get paid for and replaced anyway, I mean, I don't look at that as so degrading or hurting our cause. It's a black owned store right next door to the bar on North and Fulton Avenue that is untouched. It's a cell phone store. They sell mobile devices and things of that nature. It's black owned, it was untouched. I'm saying if we had more black owned businesses, we wouldn't be as destitute as we are for change. Again, I don't support violence. I see both sides. I, I'm, I'm always gonna see both sides because I'm African American as well. So I, I really didn't understand the reason and the concept of throwing rocks and, and, and hurting the police and things like that until I started to speak to other people and listen to their opinion and how they are kind of just fed up. You know what I mean? Like the police is using um, violence towards us. us. Why can't we use it towards them? That's right. Let's show them how it feels That's to right. be uh, beat uh, up and um, uh, attacked, attacked and, and, and hurt. You know what I mean? And so um, even though, again, I don't support violence, but Honestly, you have to come to a point where if something has to enough. be done. Yeah. Enough is enough. We weren't out there hurting each other for once. You know, normally black when black crime occurs all the time here. But I can promise you there's been no murders within the last, you know, however many days black on black involved anyway because we're all coming together at this point and that's what makes me feel good. We're just trying to get attention. And if it takes us to burn this whole city down to get attention, we gonna do that.